Hi everyone, and welcome to this episode of the Fret Success Gear Review. Today, we have a rather exciting uh, amp to demo. It is the latest offering from Line 6, the Catalyst. Um, they actually have brought out three amplifier types. There's the 60 watt version, which is this one, the 100 watt version, which is uh, the same kind of bit bigger than this, but still one by 12, a little bit power, more power, and the 200 watt, which is a two by 12, which is a bit of a wider unit. I just want to take this moment to thank Guitar Works for lending me this guitar amp, uh, which is very nice of them to do that and giving me the time to kind of spend to get to know this thing a little bit. Um, it really does take a long time. The basis of the unit is that it's uh, six kind of amplifiers that you can walk through. There's the clean, which is kind of like a very pristine clean. Uh, you can crank it up to the top and it will start to break up a little bit. Um, kind of cranked, it stays clean for quite a while. And then there's the boutique, which is kind of uh, inspired by some of those kind of custom hand-wired amps that you can get. Uh, chime, which is kind of a classic chimey sound. Uh, but still having you know a nice mid-range and a low end to it. Uh, crunch, which is that kind of classic uh, British crunch kind of sound. Uh, the dynamic, which is uh, highly kind of touch responsive, so you can dig in with your pick a bit more and it can get like kind of overdriven, kind of a you know biting crunchy tone uh, with uh, depending on how dynamic your playing is. Uh, and then obviously the high gain setting on the uh, the kind of last one there, which is as you would expect, kind of full of uh, overtones and overdrives and uh, for that kind of really overly distorted uh, tone with uh, that kind of low kind of scooped tone, which is nice. You can actually tailor this amp in as many possible ways you could think of, really. It's quite an amazing uh, amp in terms of the versatility it can offer. Um, and even just from the loudness perspective, uh, if you look at the back, you can actually switch through the uh, output stages to get various different stages of gain. Look at the back panel, you can kind of see that from the left hand side here, you've got uh, this kind of output power, which you can actually mute, take it off, uh, and then just use the direct line out because um, you, you know, for silent recording, etc. Then you can go up to half a watt, which is that kind of really low level. Uh, kind of very bedroom, uh, late at night, kind of want a bit of sound out the speakers. 50% and then 100%, so that varies on the wattage of the one you've chosen. So obviously half of this one would be 30 watts, which kind of could give you a nice kind of stage sound if you're mic'd up. Uh, we've got the USB port there, uh, which can connect to, you know, the door or digital audio workstation, so Pro Tools or Cubase or whatever you're using, Reaper, etc. Um, MIDI in on this uh, unit here, um, which is Handy one for those people that want to dial in and use an external MIDI controller um, using that one of those. So you can actually uh, do even more stuff on the bigger units. Uh, won't go into that here. Uh, foot switch uh, plug in there so you can switch between the two channels that it has built in. Uh, aux in, which means you can plug in on a 3.5 mil jack. Um, phones, audio players, etc. anything. Plug in a set of headphones and then there's a little effects loop which is quite nice for this, uh, you know, Level, level of unit, which is quite cheap. Um, and then flicking in, you can go between FX mode and power amp in mode. So you can actually use this as a kind of digital powered speaker for other external um, effects units and, and whatever you want into there. And then the direct out on the far hand side. So if we just want to go through the top panel here, we can actually go through and see. So we've got the amp selector here on this side here. So we can go through the various amps that I mentioned before. Um, six kind of nice settings there. Uh, boost, which is has a few functions. So with the boost function, you can actually uh, engage that with this button here, and that turns it on like a little stomp box, but it actually is tailored to each of these amplifier selections here, so you can actually take that in and out. And uh, there's actually a noise gate on here as well, so you can actually push and hold this and then use this dial to either turn off the noise gate or dial in how much that threshold is changing on the gate. A uh, very usable gate, actually, uh, which is surprising. And then gain, which is obviously for the channel, that kind of uh, the, pat, the kind of uh, preamp gain stage. Uh, EQ here, uh, bass, mid, treble, does what you would expect them to do. Uh, the presence is kind of, you know, from those uh, valve amps that have got kind of a nice mid-range top-end push if you want to do that and really makes it more in your face and can cut through the mix a bit more. The channel volume is 
for the channel that you select, channel AB. So if, say if you wanted to tone down one of the channels or balance them, you could do that for the channel volume. I think that's really just attenuating those sounds rather than uh, boosting anything in particular. Then, although there's only two buttons here in this section for the effects and reverb, it's uh, very much a very versatile area of the amplifier, and we'll go through that in just a second. And then the master never really changes anything below here. It's just the kind of power amp uh, stage, but I don't think it really adds any um, distortion, etc. Might correct me if I'm wrong in the comments there, but uh, from when I played with it, it's really just a volume kind of thing. Um, and over here, not to neglect, we've got um, channel A, channel B, so you can have these as presets that are saved, the two presets saved, and trigger them with the foot switch, or as I've gone at the moment, go with the manual setting here. Essentially what that does is means that you can use the amp through all the different uh, ways um, and settings, um, essentially as is. So nothing really changes as you go from A to B. But if you do want to store things, you can push and hold each of those channels and uh, it will save the current sound and settings. So let's delve into the bit of the effects and reverb setting here. So reverb effects, the potentiometer or the knob here is quite self-explanatory for the actual basic function of them. If you turn the effects knob, you actually just get more of the effect and the reverb same applies. But a kind of hidden dimension sits here. So when we turn these off, that means no effects whatsoever. We can then turn this on and that turns on the effect. And there's actually so many effects in this unit, it's quite crazy the amount, I can't remember, 18 built effects. And then we've got reverbs as well. So when you go through the actual sounds, and we'll go through them in a sec, we've got the delay setting here. Um, essentially is green, so it's a various amounts of delay. So what we do to actually change that setting is we can push and hold this, and then you can see this kind of changes here. So we can actually cycle through different types of delays, and we've got here the uh, kind of a simple delay on the clean, and then as we go through vintage delay, tape echo, analog delay, dual delay, which is kind of a ping pong thing, and then dynamic, which is kind of uh, a bit more on the dynamic side, uh, where it reacts to the volume a little bit more. So we can pick this, we'll just kind of stick with the uh, simple delay for now. Push the button again, you can see the amp goes active again. Uh, and then we go through the modulation settings, so we can actually push and hold uh, this button here for a couple of seconds, and then we can push this button here, and that takes you to the blue setting, so we push that to activate it again. And the same applies, so if we go and push hold this blue LED now, we can actually go through and select the different ones. So we've got um, chorus, tremolo, phaser, flanger, U-vibe, and the kind of rotary sound that you can get. So very usable, uh, very cool effects. Um, one thing that you don't often see on some of these amplifiers is the kind of um, more quirky effects, such as pitch shifting and stuff like that. So this has got them as well. So same thing, push and hold this couple of seconds, push that, go through to a purple, pink, um, and then it implies we can push and hold this again. And then we get to choose through the selections here. So we've got um, on the first setting, that's an octave, octave as they call it, uh, growler, pinch harmony, uh, pinch shift, pitch shift, sorry, octave fuzz, and uh, synth string. So we'll go through a few of them later on just to show you how that sounds. So then when we go through the reverb setting here, we can push and hold in the same way. And that takes us to here. And then this setting here is spring, hall, plate, chamber, shimmer, which is that kind of like kind of noise, and then modulated. So a few different types of reverb there that is uh, very usable. So across all these effects, you can actually see there's a lot of functionality around here. So it's great. So that's enough talking from me. So let's go through a few different sounds. Uh, I'll play with the Humbucker guitar PRS first, and then I'll switch to Telecaster as well. So let's play through the uh, first sound, which is the clean, pristine, no effects, nothing. <laughs> So nice and sparkly and chimey. See the range of EQ that's on there. 
nice range. Get that mid tone honk. Treble. Gonna sweep in, but not too harsh. Yeah, just by tweaking the EQ, you get almost a completely different amplifier sound, which is quite cool. I, I owned a Line 6 Spider years ago, and how far this amplifier is from that, because I eventually sold that amp because I just didn't get on with it. It was too trebly, it was too hissy, and it didn't really, it was too fake sounding. I just didn't really like it. The model amp just wasn't there yet, and uh, this is such a vast improvement on things. Okay, so turn those off. We'll go through to the boutique kind of sounding one now. Set those back to the middle again. Crank that bass a bit in the mids, knock the treble back a bit. This might be a nice one to show the boost. So we've got boost in the middle, flip that button. You see a bit more of a uh, presence of like a stomp box. Get it back just to dial it in. And just have it right the way to give it a punch. That's all just from that, so we can go back to the booty. Kind of that kind of, uh, almost like a brown sound you would normally describe it. Uh, chime. This one's supposed to be sparkly. And With a bit of a kind of overdrive if you dig in. on the edge if you drive it. So we can go to the actual crunch sound. Definitely more of that kind of uh, orangey Marshall kind of sound. This is where I feel the present makes more sense. Boost on a bit. Nice, and then we can slick to the next one, which is the dynamic, which is Kind of when you dig in a bit. Turn the presence down a bit, bass up, middle, down a bit. Kind of like one size fits all kind of amp sound that one with uh, you know depending on how hard you hit the strings and get that preamp section going very articulate and responsive to touch Nice, and then onto the high gain final kind of setting here. Not that presence back a bit because I thought it was going to go a bit wild.
we'll just go through some of these sounds with the Telecaster as well. So we'll go through the clean. Push that mid a bit, cut the treble a bit. Very usable chime, which might be where the shine. Okay, let's show you some of that uh, funky stuff that's going on then in the um, this kind of effects section. The blue ones are chorus initially. Let's just go through see how some of them sound. Let's do clean for chorus, I think. And it feels as the more you turn the effect, it doesn't turn it, it kind of just makes the effect a bit more intense, I guess. And then push this one here, hold that one. It's hard to do. <laughs> and, uh, move that one along to the boutique, which is the tremolo. Nothing much there. to the next one which is a phaser a bit more of that wobbling swishy swishy kind of we can go through to the next one which is the flanger Cool. Next one is the uh, U vibe. It's all very, you know, standard effects, nothing too crazy going on there, which is cool. You want it usable, don't you? <laughs> And then the final one, which is the rotary, which is always a bit of a funky one. Just kind of giving that organ kind of sound that you would get used to. Um, so the next one we'll do is the pitch shifting stuff, which is cool. So the first pitch shifting effect, which is the uh, octava which I think I feel we need a bit of high gain. Which is a growler, which I'm not quite sure what that one is supposed to mean. So 
All sorts going on there, phases and flanges and all sorts of mixes of things there. Next one we'll go to is pitch harmony, which is quite a cool one. So varying on where this knob is, it will add in a different harmonic. So that sounds like the octave below. Getting like seconds and third. Like a fifth. the octave above, so the seventh is always a funny one. Sounds like a nightmare. It's two octaves above. Very quirky effect, and there's a whole host of them that are going on here. So you can go right around to the octave fours, the pitch shift, and a synth string, which we'll just do that one because it's absolutely crazy. All sorts of crazy sounds going on here. We'll just jump through the reverb just quickly just while we're here. So we'll push on the reverb. So I think we'll dial that one in there and we get the first one is actually a spring, which is your standard. Then we go to hall. Always finds it my favourite reverb that on the whole one. And then we can, it's quite annoying from here with one hand. And then round to ch the chime setting, which is a plate, which is kind of a bit. As you expect, plate a bit uh, bigger reverb. Let's go around to the shimmer just for the last one here, which is this one. So, verdict. I, I feel this amp is actually incredibly useful, useful, and, and then really such an improvement of other Line 6 stuff. And I like the way that you can actually uh, go in and, you know, use a lot of features from the top here, from the amp, not having to dial into other stuff. It comes with an app that you can tweak and change and dial all sorts of things through your PC, uh, or even hook it up to a tablet or your phone, I believe, with the right uh, cable. Uh, which is really powerful if you want to go into that level of detail, but it's really nice that you can actually dial in all sorts of sounds just from the top board here. It's quite powerful that you can do that. So, and all that changeability that I did, just pushing a couple of buttons here, a couple of buttons there, I found the EQ is very usable. The presence is nicely doing what it's supposed to do. Uh, and the range of amps that they've got here, there's, I'd say there's a few in the middle section that's you know could sound a little bit similar, I guess, depending on your style and guitar that you're playing. But I like the fact there's a clean, there's a high gain, there's a crunch. That's generally all you really need on an amp. And then you can dial in and boost things if you need to. The foot switch is there if you need it. You've got gain control here. There's so much control over the amp, but actually it's not like you have to be really knowledgeable about what you're doing. You can just turn it on, scroll through these amp selections and have a pretty good time and a pretty good sound getting going from the start and from scratch really. So it's it's really quite powerful that you can do that. And uh, you know, it's definitely worth a go. It, it definitely worth a check. And the price is very reasonable. There are other price, you know, amps in this price range that you could use, but I like the sound of this one um, because the other Line 6 ones were a little bit more harsh on the ear and you would get too close and they would squeal. 
You saw there previously that I was getting feedback from the amp and it was nice, controlled, predictable feedback, which is nice for it to behave like that. I didn't really notice any latency on the amp, maybe occasionally a tiny little bit, but not enough to bother you or put you off. It's, it's, it was tiny if you noticed anything at all. Um, but I find, I find it's a really, really usable amp. I, I think it's a, a really good one that Line 6 have come out with. So hope you enjoyed this review. Uh, I'd love to see in the comments section and some likes. This is such a capable amp uh, full of so many features that it's really hard to cover all of them within a video that's a reasonable time. So I know there's other ones out there by Line 6 and stuff that will show you more in depth, but I got a lot just from reading the manual for 15 minutes, actually going through and it all became pretty straightforward after a little bit of tinkering and playing. So I found that when you crank this, you could definitely get that kind of raw sound. 60 watts is quite loud, actually. Uh, it doesn't really come across in the microphone stuff, but it's really very usable. I just find if you had a couple of 2x12s, 200 watts, you'd be pretty usable. And these things are really, really light to carry, which is nice in this day and age. Um, so yeah, nice little unit. Thanks, everyone, and I'll see you next time.